This is part 3 of Angular CRUD tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss setting up routing for our sample application. So here is what we want to do. We want to display a navigation menu on top of the page as you can see right here. When we click on the list navigation menu item, we want to navigate to employee list component. Along the same lines, when we click on create, we want to display create employee component. At the moment, we don't have create employee component. So first, let's go ahead and generate that. We're going to make use of Angular CLI for that. So here is the command ng, which stands for Angular CLI itself, g for generate, c for component. And let's call our component create employee component. We don't want a spec file to be generated for this component. So I'm going to set spec option to false. And we want this component to be flat. So I'm going to set the flat option to true. When I mean flat, we want this create employee component to be created in this employees folder without its own dedicated folder. So when we look at our project, notice we already have the employees folder. Within that, we already have list employees component. So we want our create employee component also to be created in this employees folder. We don't want a dedicated folder of its own. There we go. Our component is created and the root app module is also updated. Now, if we take a look at the employees folder within our project, notice along with list employees component, we also have create employee component. Now, as far as setting up routing is concerned, the first step is to define a base path. And we do that within our application host page, which is usually this index.html file. So if we take a look at this file, notice we already have a base path defined. So this base href element is set to a single forward slash by default when we created this Angular project using the Angular CLI. This base href element tells the Angular router how to compose navigation URLs. We'll discuss the significance of this base href element in detail in our next video. For now, let's leave it with its default value, a single forward slash. Next, we need to import the router module. The router module contains all the Angular routing features that we need, such as the router service and routing directives like router link, router link active, router outlet, etc. We'll discuss the significance of these routing directives in just a bit. But first, let's go ahead and import router module. And we do that within our application root module, which is present in this file, app.module.ts. So in this file, let's include the required import statement. Just like how we have imported browser module, ng module, we are also going to import router module. And we need to make it part of the import array right here just like how we have browser module. Next, let's configure the application routes. For that, I'm going to import a type called routes from the same Angular router package. And right here, let's create a constant. I'm going to call this app routes. And the type for this is going to be the routes type that we have just imported from the Angular router package. So this one equal to an array of routes. So this array is going to contain route objects. And here is our first route. Notice within the route object, since we have specified a type for this constant, when I press control space here, look at that, I can see all the properties a route object can have. We'll discuss most of these properties in our upcoming videos. For now, to define a route, we are going to use just two properties. The first one is the path property. And I'm going to set the path to list. So basically, this means in the address bar, if we see that path list, then what is the component that we want to display? In our case, we want to display list employees component. So when we see this path list in the URL, we want the employee list component to be displayed. So we specify that like this using the component property. And similarly, let's define another route. So when we see this path create, so when we click on the create navigation menu item, the URL is going to change to create. So when we see create in the URL, we want to display create employee component. So let's change the component here to create employee component. And the path here 
is going to be create. Notice at the moment we have got four red squiggly lines here and if I hover the mouse over one of these squiggly lines we have a message saying missing white space and this is reported by this TS Lint tool. We discussed what is linting and this TS Lint tool can do for us in our Angular CLI course. So if you are new to linting please check out our Angular CLI course. Now to fix these errors that we have all we need to do is introduce a space between the property and its corresponding values. Let's do it at these four places. At this point we have all of our linting errors fixed. Now let's create another route. So let's make a copy of this route object, paste it right here and I'm going to set the path to an empty string and instead of using the component property I'm going to use this redirect to property and set its value to for slash list. So when the path is an empty string meaning in the address bar we don't have any client side portion of the URL like list or create. We navigated to the root URL. So when the path is empty we want to redirect to the list route which is going to display the list of employees. So that's what this empty path route does. And for this empty path route to work we have to include another property that is the path match property and I'm going to set that to a value of full because we want to do a full path match. The other possible value for this property is prefix. We'll discuss the difference between these two values in our upcoming videos. For now let's set this property to full. This completes configuring our routes. Next we need to let the Angular router know about our configured routes and the way we do that is by using for root method of the router module. So on this router module right here we call the for root method. Notice there are actually two methods for root and for child. Let's use the for root method and to this method we pass our configured routes. We know our configured routes are present in this constant so let's pass that to this for root method. Now we have another method that is the for child method. We'll discuss the difference between these two methods in our upcoming videos. Next we need to create the navigation menu itself and tie these configured routes to our navigation menu. And remember we want our navigation menu to be always displayed. So the ideal location for our navigation menu is our root component, app component. And our root component is present in this file app.component.ts that's our TypeScript file. And the view template is in this file app.component.html. So I'm going to replace this HTML with our navigation menu HTML. To create the navigation menu we're going to use bootstrap navbar component. If you're new to bootstrap please check out our bootstrap course. So let's replace this HTML with nav element and we're going to use two bootstrap classes navbar and navbar-default. Both of these classes are used for styling and inside this nav element let's create an unordered list and we are going to use two more classes on this unordered list. The first one is the nav class and we are going to use another class navbar-nav. So all these four bootstrap classes they used for styling our navigation menu. In our navigation menu we want two menu items list and create. So within the unordered list let's create a list item and inside this let's create an anchor element and the text is going to be list. When we click on this list navigation menu item we want to go to list route and we tell that to the Angular router using a directive called router link. And this router link directive is provided by the router module that we have imported. So we set this router link directive to the route that we want to navigate to. We want to navigate to list route. Along the same lines let's include another list item and this navigation menu item is going to display this text create and when we click on that link we want to go to the create route. Next we need to specify where we want the routed component view template to be displayed. 
When we click on these navigation menu items, we want that respective routed component view template to be displayed just below the navigation menu. So we have this navigation menu within our root component. So just below this navigation menu, I'm going to include another directive and that is the router outlet directive. Again, this router outlet directive is provided by the router module that we have imported. So this is the location where we will have the routed component view template displayed. For example, when we navigate to the list route, list employees component view template is displayed at this location where we have the router outlet directive. And at this point, if we navigate to the create route, the create employee component is displayed in the location where we have the router outlet directive. So the create employee component replaces the list employees component. This way, the navigation menu is always displayed but depending on the route that is active that respective route view template is displayed at the location where we have this router outlet directive. At the moment we are routing to this list employees component so we don't need its selector. So let's go back to list employees component and then remove the selector that we have right here. Let's save all our changes and run our Angular project by using this command ngserve-o. Notice the navigation menu is displayed as expected. At the moment, we are on the list route and we see list employees component view template. At this point, when we click on this create navigation menu item, the route changes to create and we see the create employee component view template. Now, if we navigate to the root URL without list or create, we specified that with this empty path route, we want to redirect to the list route. So at this point, when I hit enter, look at what happens to the URL. It automatically redirects us to the list route and we see the list employees component view template. At the moment, our application is using the entire width of the browser and we don't want that. So I'm going to wrap all the HTML that we have within our root component inside another development with this bootstrap class container. So let's move the closing dev to the end, save our changes and take another look at the browser. Notice now our application is not occupying the entire width of the browser. In our next video, we'll discuss the significance of the base href element that we have in our index.html. To display this navigation menu that we have right here, we're using the bootstrap navbar component. And here is our route configuration. At the moment, the list route is active. So this list employees component view template is displayed at this location where we have the router outlet directive. Thank you for listening and have a great day.